So we're going to go through some topics with our polynomial functions, really focusing on the graphs of them. So with our polynomials, we have this general form. So what we talked about in the last series of videos is how a polynomial is made up of these numerical coefficients times this variable part. And we talked about how there could be multiple variables, but when we're working with functions, there should just be a single input. So that's where we're changing to x. So a power function is where we just have a single term. And what this notation is saying is we have a real number. So we have a numerical coefficient. And then we have our variable with an exponent. And that exponent needs to be a non-negative integer. So like types of exponents we could have. 0 is a possibility. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's positive whole numbers as well as 0 are possibilities for our exponent. Now this notation a to the n, memorizing this notation isn't the most important thing in the world for our class, but what it's representing is some numerical coefficient that goes along with that exponent. So when we have a polynomial function, the general form goes that we can have multiple t terms. So this power function is just this single term, and we're going to talk about the graphs of just those. And then a polynomial function adds more pieces in. So for example, a power function could be 4x to the fifth power. That could be a power function. So that a with a subscript of n piece would be that numerical coefficient of 4. We have our variable x. And then we have some non-negative integer for our exponent. Now to make this a polynomial, what I could do is start adding on other pieces. And the key is that we have this kind of largest exponent. So that's our degree of the polynomial. And then we can have exponents that decrease from there. Now these can really be in any order, but if it's in standard form, we see our decreasing exponents as we read left to right. We don't have to have all of the numbers, like I don't have to have an exponent of 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We can mix them up, we can skip over a few. So let me add some more pieces here. I could have plus 8x cubed. So there we can see we don't have an x to the fourth piece, and that's completely fine. Um, then we could go minus 3x, and then plus 10. So this right here is a polynomial function. And what it comes down to is we have these numerical coefficients adding up. We have our x values with their exponents that are non-negative integers. And then we have this piece at the end here that's our constant term. And that's where, like I said before, it's like we do have x with an exponent of 0 there, but that just turns into a 1, so we don't need to write it out. So that's our polynomial function form, and where we have this notation, it just comes down to these numerical coefficients and x with these exponents on them. Now some terminology, leading term is going to come through from the term that has the highest degree, or the you could think of that as the largest exponent. Let's go with the term that has the largest exponent. And in this video, we're going to talk about this idea of long run behavior. Um, and with the function that I wrote up above there to focus on the long run behavior, I would look at this leading term of 4x to the power of 5. Since 5 is the largest exponent, that makes it a leading term. And the degree of that polynomial that I wrote up above there, this would be a degree 5 polynomial. And it's because of that largest exponent of 5. So before we ta start talking about like what all these pieces at the end do to our polynomial function, let's just focus on power function. What if we just have 
some numerical coefficient, and even, we might just skip over the numerical coefficient piece for a bit, but what if we have x raised to some power? And what we're going to talk about is long run behavior. So long run behavior is all about what's happening at the ends of our graph. What's happening out at positive infinity and negative infinity. So how we're going to discuss this is we're going to talk about what our function does as x goes to positive infinity. So I'm going to talk about as x goes to positive infinity. And this arrow in mathematics, oh, it's hard to draw this without using another arrow. How we can read that is as approaches. So as x approaches infinity, I'm going to say f of x approaches, and then I'm going to fill in the blank there. So the idea of this is if we're with a graph, as x approaches infinity, I can imagine starting at zero here, and if I'm walking along the x-axis out towards positive infinity, what is my function doing? What's happening to the y values? So in this case here, with y equals x squared, as x is getting larger and larger and larger, y values are getting larger and larger and larger. They're going off to positive infinity. So what I could write for this graph is as x approaches positive infinity, f of x approaches positive infinity. And it's all because at the end of this graph, it's going up forever, off to y values of positive infinity. Then what we're going to do is think about the other direction as well. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches, and then we're going to fill in the blank. So this is going to be the same idea, but walking in the other direction. So if I'm starting at the origin, and I'm walking to the left here, off to x equals positive infinity, I want to know what is my function doing, and it's getting larger and larger and larger over here. So the idea being, at the end of this graph, it's going off to positive infinity over here as well. Again, positive infinity in terms of y values. Like if I follow this y-axis off the page, it's going off to positive infinity, and that's where those coordinates are going to be mapping on both sides. So I could also make this statement of as x approaches negative infinity, f of x, or y, is approaching positive infinity as well. And this is a property of functions that are degree 2. This is going to be our long run behavior for degree 2 polynomials. This idea that at the ends of the page, because long run is kind of happening out here, we'll eventually talk about stuff going on in the middle. But out here, we're going off to positive infinity, we're going off to positive infinity. Now for x cubed, so this would be degree 3. So I could talk about what's happening as x is approaching positive infinity, and I can see the y values of my function are going off into the positive direction, off to positive infinity. So I could say, as x approaches positive infinity, or as I move to the right along the x-axis, f of x is moving up, which is towards positive infinity. Now in the other direction, as x approaches negative infinity, so again, thinking of starting at the origin here, if I'm walking off to this left-hand side, and I want to know what my function is doing, well, over here, it's going down, 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 down. So over here, it's going off to y values that are super negative, which is the idea of negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, infinity or as we move to the left-hand side of our page, our function values, f of x, move to negative infinity. 
So we can see this change in long run behavior here for positive infinity. It's exactly the same. But now as we move to the left hand page, left hand side of the page, it's this difference of going up and off the page versus down and off the page. And that's this difference between our function going off to positive infinity or negative infinity. Degree four. So x to the fourth, we can notice is that this shape is pretty similar to x squared. Now the output values are absolutely different. Like if you start imagining plugging in values for x, you're going to get different values than x squared. But overall, this general shape is the same. So this would be degree four. Well, there's something to be said about having an even degree. So this is an even degree. This is also an even degree. In terms of long run behavior, these are going to have the same long run behavior. This is also having this going off to positive infinity and positive infinity as we go to kind of both sides of the page, as we go to the right, as we go to the left. So I'm not going to rewrite it all. I'm just going to say same as degree two. And if we started looking at graphs of x to the sixth, x to the eighth, x to the, I could just choose any even number. Well, the shape that kind of occurs in the middle here, which would be considered short run behavior, that would be a little different, but the long run behavior is going to be the same for all of those. Now for x to the fifth, so this would be degree five. What we can see is a shape that's very similar to our cubic function, that x cubed. Again, there are differences and the values are in the end different from each other, but overall the shape is very similar. So there's nothing to be said about having an odd degree for our polynomial graphs or these power function graphs. So this has the same going off to positive infinity as we approach positive infinity on the right and approaching negative infinity as we approach negative infinity to the left. So for long run behavior, this is going to be same as degree three. So that's what we're getting at here with our basic power functions and how you can see these graphs together on a single graph. When they're even, they have the same long run behavior out at the sides. Same thing with odd degrees. We have the same long run behavior out to the sides where the differences really come in are going to be in the middle here. But that will come through when we talk about um, short run behavior. So there's kind of, ooh, I don't quite want to say two forms because there are going to be more, but you can really follow these forms for our basic power functions that we lined up up here for our long run behavior. But let's just hop over to Desmos for a moment and we can kind of play around with these. So let's say I type in x to the sixth. So if I have a power function of x to the sixth, in my mind I could think, it's going to be a pretty close shape to our x squared function, which we're more comfortable with graphing. We've graphed quadratics a lot. Um, even x cubed, we maybe come across before. But basically, you can just keep those two shapes in mind for these graphs. So let's say I graph x to the sixth. So there's my shape that's almost a parabola, but isn't. So I have my long run behavior going off to positive infinity. But what I wanted to have you notice is what if I put a negative out front? With this, I still have the general shape of my kind of slightly parabola-ish. However, my long run behavior changed. Now, instead of them both having f of x going off to positive infinity, now they're both going off to negative infinity. So with that long run behavior, where I was very close to saying there's two forms, uh, no, it can switch around and it would switch around 
if we start plugging in negative numbers in front of our highest degree here. So I'm going to switch that back to positive. I'm going to bump this down to, let's go cubed, so we can see our cubic function. So this is a general form for our cubic function. Again, if I put a negative out front here, we'll see this flip in our long run behavior. So now as x goes to positive infinity, y is going off to negative infinity. And then as x goes to negative infinity, y is going to positive infinity. So when writing down the long run behavior, just pay attention to if that there's a negative in there. So with the polynomial, you would have more terms. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and call this x to the fifth. Or let's even make our polynomial that I wrote at the top of our page. So 4x to the fifth. So we have this general shape here. I can see my long run behavior that I would expect for kind of what lines up with x cubed. But what happens when I start adding in more terms? So let's see plus 8x cubed. So I change shape a little bit, but mostly I kind of just have the same behavior. I could zoom in a bit. That's not too different. And let's see what happens if I go plus 3x squared. Now I got a little more curvature to it. Now it kind of goes up and turns down, goes up. But notice the long run behavior. It's the same. It's the same as if I took all of that out long run behavior is exactly the same. So what I want us to notice is I could just start adding on a bunch of stuff and as long as I don't add on anything that's a higher degree, it's going to keep that general long run behavior. Even this still has that same long run behavior. Now if I added something with x to the sixth, now long run behavior is going to follow the quadratic going off to positive infinity on both sides. So because this is a higher degree, it kind of takes over in terms of that long run behavior. So what I want us to take from that is at the top of our page, this sentence kind of snuck in there that our leading term, whatever our leading term is with its numerical coefficient, and we'll want to pay attention to whether that's positive or negative. And then we'll have x to the n, which that exponent we just really want to focus on if it's negative or, or sorry, if it's even or odd, because that will determine our long run behavior. Is it both going off to positive infinity? Is one side positive infinity and negative infinity? And it will just depend on that degree of our leading term. So if we recognize our leading term, then that determines the long run behavior of our function. So that's the setup of our polynomial functions, this idea of long run behavior, and we'll get some more practice with these.